the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. This morning, and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It's Tuesday, the 23rd of April, 2024, and you are on the clock with Erin Green. On the clock, we engage organizations, institutions, social and cultural leaders, and ordinary people to better understand the impact of public policy, private sector development, and emerging social and consumer trends. On the clock, we have conversations that help us understand and navigate a rapidly changing Bahamas. I have one of those conversations lined up for us this morning. I await the arrival of my guest, Ms. Kendanique or Kendanika Campbell Moss, aka IQ Kenny. She is a Speaker, a project manager. She works in broadcast journalism, marketing, public relations, digital and social media spaces. She is a wedding and events coordinator and a webinar host. And uh, I've asked her to join me this morning. Ah, oh boy. I've asked her to join me this morning to talk about her brand, Mommy Hustle and an event she has coming up next month. Unfortunately, I just got a note from her, she won't be able to join us because she's actively engaged in that mommy hustle. Uh, I look forward to when we can pick up this conversation again. I had a question for my audience today. I think I'm going to throw it out anyway, and then we're going to delve into some of today's headlines. And recently, on Beyonce's internet, I've seen lots of conversations with women, particularly the mothers of children, talking about a dynamic within the household where husbands and fathers of children <clears throat> are telling the mothers of children that they, the father of the child, will not be made to be babysitters. And they feel offended that their wife, the mother of their child, has an expectation that fathers should babysit their own children. Now, I will state that I have not heard this or experienced this sentiment being shared in the same way in the Bahamas, but I thought it was very interesting, and I wanted to put the question out there. Should fathers be made to babysit their own children? That is the primary question. Should fathers be made to babysit their own children. This is a, a question that I had sort of attached to the conversation I was hoping to have this morning. I'm going to share a bit about that event as the conversation goes on. The numbers to call 323 6232, 325 4316, 325 4259 and 242-300-5720 for Family Island residents. That number is toll-free. Again, 242-300-5720 is toll-free. And the text line, as always, 422-GR96. 
That's 422-4796. So I had that question in mind from last night, and then when I picked up, producer, I see we have a, a call coming in already. When I picked up this morning's papers and saw the headlines, I thought, well, here we are. Good morning, caller. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Fine, thanks. Um, I think father should be 100% involved in the, ch in the, in the home. Mm -hmm. I think father should take, begin to take the responsibility of helping out to clean, cook, wash, because the sons need, the, the sons need a model in the home so that the sons, when they grow up, they could assist their wives. Because I think charity still begins at home. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I mean, you could thank expound you. if you want, but thank you. Okay, I got a text here that says, Ms. Green, I'd like to point out that fathers feel like it is babysitting because, because wives want to make up the rules. The reverse rarely happens because dot, 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 feminism. Texter, I like that text. Fathers feel like it is babysitting because wives want to make up the rules. And based on what the, the caller just said, what, when he spoke, uh, producer, let's get the next call lined up. I come into you in a second. When he spoke, he said, like, fathers must take up their role in the household and help the wives. And I want to say that I think a part of it is assuming your role and leadership as the father, right? And the, the text picks up on that, the suggestion that because wives want to make the rules. Are men enabled, right, is in that space, can men operate with the same authority as a woman, or are they made to feel like they have been given a job? I got another text, I'm coming to it right now. I think of when we hear conversations with women who are in conflict with the child's father and they refer, when having a conversation about the family dynamic or about the, the father of the child, they refer to the child as my child alone, right? Like, I don't care what Bob wants to do with my child, and I hear that sentiment a lot. Is it that, like the text in the call, well, like the texter is suggesting that men use that language, babysitting, because their autonomy and authority as a parent has been diminished? I got a text here. Good morning, Aaron. Some men ain't it. My son's father lives on the island. We live in Nassau. I was going to the island just for the weekend. He, haven't, he hasn't seen the four-year-old in a while, so I asked him if he wanted to keep him for the weekend while I was buying tickets to get him there. The man could say to me, he ain't keeping no child overnight. You ever hear any foolishness? So I left my baby with my mama. Okay, this is, I think, I don't want to say an isolated case, like this is the only man that's ever said that, but that's not the majority of instances. Is it possible that the man panicked because he is not living in the conditions he thinks is suitable for his child to reside in, particularly overnight. Is that possible? But I feel you. And then here's the question. Are women making men feel this way, or is there a larger social dynamic at play, a larger social dynamic at play that creates this space where then women now say, my child, when they're in conflict, they say, my child, as opposed to our child. I see we've got a caller 
on the line. Good morning, caller. Hey, good morning, Aaron, and good morning, dear guest. Morning, morning. Listen, I think I think um, men are definitely men do get on the offensive. When, so I agree with that text, though. Um, that men get on the offensive when women tend to call them out mm-hmm. um, and try to make them seem as if they are, you know, not a parent, but more like, listen, I don't even like the term babysitting, right? Because right. the father looking after his own child shouldn't be called babysitting. I think it's the parent's responsibility to look after their child. And taking care of your own child should be seen as a normal part of parenting. So yeah. I don't like the term babysitting. I agree That's with I you. I don't like it at all. But I, I wanted to use the language that is commonly used. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and, and I think that we, you know, well, I, I, I get it. Um, but I think that we should, you know, and I understand why you're using it because most people would resonate with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but fathers should definitely be actively involved in caring for their child and not be seen as, you know, listen, I have to take care of this child because, you know, mommy has to go to work or there's nobody else to look after this child. Um, I think that um, there are some men out there who don't do right by their baby mothers and they don't do right by the child. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one of the main reasons why a lot of women do tend to hit below the belt um, in those situations, but you know, um, I'll con- continue to sit down and listen. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think the first thing to note in this conversation is not all men and not all women. Right. Not all men and not all women. We know that in this Bahamian context, that this dynamic that I'm highlighting is not the majority of Bahamian men. And it's not the majority of Bahamian women either. But we acknowledge also that it happens. That intimate, they call it intimate partner conflict and intimate partner violence can drive these dynamics. Okay, I got some more text here. Let's get to the text line. The talker, the caller talking about helping out in the household most men start out helping out, then get verbally abused because they didn't do it right. No offense, but w- many women are micromanagers. A very interesting point there. The text continues. Most women these days believe that they can only use negative reinforcement. Women don't understand how to communicate with men anymore. Imagine if a man told his wife to take care of the child and then when he comes back, points out everything she did wrong aggressively. Yes, and looking at it from the other side, a feminist approach would be to critique him. I see, all of these conversations are fascinating because I think it, it boils down to our, not just our perceptions of how power works, but how we operate power. And we come from, I would say, let's call it a fundamentalist space where men are the providers and women are the caretakers of the household. But by caretakers of the household, we, we, we mean in many instances, they run the household. The household is their domain. They are in charge, right? And I think that women exercising their power in new ways we may have gone over the other side and we want to claim these spaces as our own and we then develop some unhealthy dynamics. Some unhealthy dynamics. Here's another text. No, he did not panic. He does not want his freedoms infringed upon. The freedoms he enjoyed as a man with no children, that is. But it could be true. Absolutely. Absolutely. But when I say panic, what I mean is, like, imagine if she had said, look, I'm bringing this boy down for Easter break. I need you to keep him for all of Easter break, two weeks. What she really said was, hey, I come into the island for the weekend, and there's an opportunity. Do you want me to bring shorty boy? You could have him for the night. You don't, Right? And that's why I said maybe he panicked. They're giving him the benefit of the doubt because we look at these men 
They're supposed to be strong like ox, broad like tree. And we forget that they, they have feelings too. They have insecurities as well. They may have been poorly socialized too. They could panic. I just was trying to be fair. Erin, great topic as a mother. And call I come into you right now. Great topic as a mother. I hate when men refer to watching their child as babysitting. That is despicable. You help make the child. You should help watch the child as well. It takes more than money to raise a child and kids need their fathers. My ex-husband refuses to watch his child with every excuse in the book because he doesn't want to take on the extra expense or responsibility, and that is not fair. That is not fair at all, Texter. I'm going to come back to that text in a moment. Good morning, caller. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Um, I'm good, thank you. And yourself? I'm oh, good, good. Uh, first time caller. Thank you. Very interesting topic. But I think women, we just have to be careful who we have in our children with. You know, we have to have these... We have to have these conversations with the person that we may be dating just to ensure what type of father this person may be. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I am very fortunate, I must say. My husband and I, we have seven kids together, three of which are still dependent, mm -hmm. and I do not have this issue. I do not, and I thank God for that because he is family-oriented. I think okay. if you're a man, and if you say that you're a man, then you should, uh, if you have a kid, and you should be willing to do these things that is necessary uh, to do for your children, which includes babysitting from time to time. Yes. So, <laughs> men, get it together. You know, women, we do it. We do more than our share in most cases. But you all have a long way to go, a lot of you, you know, get it together. I wish my husband could just um, train most men on how to deal with their kids. I tell you, I don't have to cook if I don't want to. Absolutely. He, he, he tosses me sometimes to get in the kitchen, you know, he's preparing these big time breakfasts for the children and whatnot. And I really consider myself fortunate because, you know, most men wouldn't even want to make it probably cereal for their kids or whatnot, but to those who do and go above and beyond, kudos to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you yes, so much. And the point that you made, it's also about choosing, right? I'd say for women who are beating up men that they chose, beating them up is not the right approach because you got to beat yourself up as well, right? We just need a different approach to it. I want to get to this caller and then get back to that commentary. Good morning, caller. Ren, how you doing? Good, thank you. How you do? Good, good. Just tuned into the show about two minutes ago. I'm very appreciative of the previous caller. Yes. I listened to her words quite attentively. There are a couple of things that we have to also take in, in, in acknowledgement here. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, you know, um, for most women that I happen to talk with, especially the younger ones, I always give them sort of like a little key to find out where their mindset of their companion is. Mm -hmm. I often tell them, there's three specific questions I ask. I want them to ask when they're involved with a young man. Firstly, where do they see themselves uh, progressively in the next five years? Mm -hmm. Secondly, what, what is their plan? What is his plan? And if this person is going to be their mate, what is his plan going forward for the two of them to move forward and upward? What I mean by that is what is the career path and how is he going to assist in making the, his and her reality uh, become uh, into fruition? Mm -hmm. My third point is family. Um, in terms of family, what role is he going to play? Uh, because traditionally, we know the male is normally the provider and the protector. We have so many abuses where a lot of women abuse men. Uh, and, and, and by doing so, you know, the company that they keep is also another factor that we have. And that she keeps is also a factor in the relationship. There are many variables, and I'll close on this. There's so many variables that we have to be focused at. It is hard, and many women would not know this, but I'm telling you, it is very hard for a man who wants to be a good man in this country with some of the women that they are involved with. It is very hard, because no matter what that man has done for them, they will always say that it's not good enough. We have to change the mindset. Relationships is not a one-way, it's two-way. You bring, I bring. She gives, I give. And that's the way how it's supposed to be. But society is so skewed 
where the weight of the relationship really is on the man, that when the man is uh, falls prey or falls short on this any one particular day, then the whole society crushes on him, not realizing that he is man too, flesh and blood. Mm-hmm. He will have his downtime, allow him to gather his strength again and stand up for him again. We have to, we have to acknowledge men for, for, for a season. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Jeff. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, thank you. You said a lot. I, I, so many things to touch on. Choosing a person to produce a child with is so important. I want to treat this seriously. I mean, because it's a serious conversation. I was just thinking while we were talking, if I were to have a child, right, I would not just look at the man, I would also look at his family. Now, when I say choosing to have a child, I just want to remind you all, whenever you have sex, you have the risk, you, you, there's the risk of creating a life, right? So anytime you have sex, remember, even with protection, even with multiple forms of protection and play, you can still produce a baby. We hear stories where the mother said, I actually felt the baby grab the I- IUD, right? Like, any time you decide to engage in this act, there's a potential of making a baby. And so you should take that choice very seriously. I would ensure, if I, if I were to father the child, I would ensure that I am maintaining a relationship with the mother of the child's family as well. I would insist on it. And even when she tell me she don't want to see me no more, she don't want to smell me no more, I might as well become a citizen of another nation. That's how much she hate me. I'll go back to her family and remind them that I understand the journey of pregnancy and that women become hormonally changed. They, be, can be, they can become different people. And so during this process, I want to maintain a relationship with y'all when I can't maintain a relationship with her because this is more than our relationship. This is about the life of a child. Um, the, the caller talking about the experience with her husband, I want to say I know plenty men like that. I know plenty of women who are fortunate, whether they realize it or not, to have men like that. I got a cousin, and my cousin tell me, the man, look here, if I could be the one to go to school every day and pick up my daughters, if I could be the one to plot their hair, i proud. i proud of myself, and i happy that I could fulfill that role as their father. I'm going to say good morning to... Arthur Seymour, and good morning to Varian Dean, two great fathers I know. Just two, just only a quick example. Here's another text. Fathers should because, and that's it, it, it's headed, fathers should because. Once they experience what shared responsibilities are, it will fix a lot of broken homes. Men feel as if they should not do a woman's job. It's not a job. It's being a parent. Too many fathers are absent because there is no bond relationship. The term, using the term babysitting is an excuse. They should look at it as spending time and co-parenting. I call, I come into you right now, and we get into, there's a question about paternity leave and the value of it, and that bond, because the bond is created in those early days, skin-to-skin touch, right? Skin-to-skin bonding. That's why paternity leave is so important. Let's go to the call. Good morning, caller. Well, great amount of your call. I said, call is on point. And oh, I yeah. thought about it. I said, me call it because mm-hmm. I have good parents. I was going to lay back and listen, listen. I said, you know something? My dad chose the right person. My mom chose the right person. They all come together in a bond. They chose the right person in marriage. And they had a plan. Mm-hmm. Dad had a plan for travel, but they had to eat. Mom had a plan. But when they chose the right person, they also was entrepreneur. Mom had her own business with grandma, her parents, my, my grandmother. 
and Dad had a drum, but it came down from Eggs Drummer. So they came to get us one, and they, and they built a, and they built a, they built a fortune uh, among their stuff with, with, Gram, with Grammys and got help. Mm-hmm. They started their own food store. So it's a combination. When you come together as one, what is your economic passion? What is so and so passion? They kind of come together, not baby, and I said, mm-hmm. and I see a lot of that. Yeah. In our in our in our system, no plan, and that's what we need teaching our primary school and our high schools, economics. So, and couple, we need to teach. I but I think, but I know I just want to teach parenting. Right. Parenting because parenting more than my in culture, and I show you know about that with your parents. Mm-hmm. But come to, but they come together with a plan economically though. Yeah. It was natural that. Because my, when my dad met my grandfather, I mean, my grandfather met my grandfather, yeah, he wanted a letter. He had to write a letter in those days. Mm-hmm. And he said, son, what is your plan for my, for my daughter? Yeah. You know, he had a plan. Yeah. He had a plan together. They were in a food store and a restaurant. Yeah. And, and, gra- and the grandpa and my grandma said, I'll help you. Because they already had their stores. Yes. So we don't do that no more. We go back there to that Aaron Green. The, the system will be a better system, and it, that, will be, that should be a part of the national plan, the national youth service. That sort plan of, for marriage, plan for life togetherness. Yeah, giving people, young people the opportunity to talk about these things. And to, yeah. get, to get young people, the middle aged people, old people do, because they ain't married yet. Yeah. Or you they go. got married again, start all over. But start all over the plan. You're absolutely right. Thank you, Pumpkin Eater. Have a good day. Absolutely. Call, I come into you right now. Um, yeah, let's go to the call. Call. Give me one second. Uh, you know what you said, pumpkin eater. Having a child and growing a family is not the work of just one generation, and people should be able to rely on past generations, the experience, the right, the, the history, the the stories, to help form and sustain their generation and the next generation. Uh, you you brought up so much pumpkin eater, but I want to go to this next caller. Good morning, caller. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, yeah. It's a very interesting conversation in that, you know, uh, people born in the 60s would have a different outlook. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, at the age of 13, I would have had to babysit my younger brother. I have him by 13 or 14 years. Mm-hmm. So I never had a problem with taking care or uh, supervising my children. Uh I, I, the young gentleman and the lady, I, I agree with them wholeheartedly in the fact that I actually, every time people say, you're babysitting the day, I say, no, 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 you can't babysit your own children. So I share that, I, I, that, mm-hmm. that thinking too. And another thing with, 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 the, with babysitting, you know, it, it, at, at my age, and even, you know, I had my first child when I was a real man, I was about 35. So I, I knew what it was, and, and me and the baby mother, we had, we had, we had separated after, I, my daughter wasn't even two yet, and she had moved back to Andrews. So that never impeded me from doing what I had to do. I would send stuff on the mailboat every two weeks and do what I had to do and send everything that she needed and up to this day. As a matter of fact, she had me on Facebook, so I didn't even know she was telling me what kind of father I was until I saw it. But the thing is, what I'm saying is, mm-hmm. as far as babysitting, some men are very insecure, and judging from the text coming through on Dwight Show and other shows, I heard DeAndre made a joke the other day, a lot of men are hurt by women, you know, and I don't know why. I mean, I've been hurt, but I, I changed my shirt. So I, I don't really, it doesn't bother me. I love women so much. It, it, the, the hurting from a woman is just one woman. So I don't know, it really seems that a lot of men are hurting damage and this feminist, you know, there's so many global agendas, you know, the feminist agenda might be mixed up in it, but I don't have time to really wallow in it. You see what I'm saying, Aaron? Mm-hmm. My mm-hmm. mind is bigger than hating on a woman and worrying about this equality and whatever foolishness they're distracting us with. But maybe some men are so insecure that they feel as if the baby mother is going to scheme and it, the, 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 this, this concept of not wanting to babysit, it either is had to do with married and unmarried. If the person is married, they definitely won't have a problem with that. But it becomes a trend whereby uh, you do babysitting, you babysitting. But if you still love the woman, you might have a problem with babysitting because you're jealous and you feel she's going out having fun. But it's really your duty. Like me, uh, even, even, even as the responsibility, the reciprocity of having sex. And I like how you said, even with a condom, because, you know, I was frightened twice. At the age of 52, with my 8-year-old, when my fiance told me she's pregnant, I almost had a heart attack, and I, I went and consulted a friend and all. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, at the age of 58, with, with, with this, with this uh, one with the ain't 2 yet, I was frightened also. And the condoms was, was worn all of these times. And, uh, you know, things happened. Maybe 
microscopic reality. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I have to take the responsibility of it. Yeah. So uh, uh, people should bear that in mind. Every time you have sex, it's happened. Now, maybe eight years past, you didn't, nothing happened, but then God put it in the way. And she found that it was a son. So, you know, abortion is off the table, of course. And most women, they don't want to get rid of children. And, and what, what we should do in case of abortion is let women have a, have a sponsor group, a charitable group, sponsor or, 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 a free ultrasound so they could actually hear the heartbeat before they decide to kill a child. Boy, humanize the situation. That's some, you see what I'm saying? That's some ninja tactics, eh? I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I appreciate yeah, the yeah. vibe. I appreciate the vibe. That's, yeah, bless them. Yeah, man. Right, yeah, man. Because once you've made connection, once you've connected, right, it's, it's so hard to disconnect. Oh, boy. Good morning, caller. Man? Morning. Now, now I would say, mm-hmm. now, the, I don't know about new style mothers, but the old style Bahamian mother, they are something special. The children is theirs. That's their children. Mm-hmm. That is theirs. I mean, like, like, st- they ain't leave their children nowhere. Really, the, I mean, like, the Jamaicans will leave their children in Jamaica, some here, some in, that's the God of the States. Yeah. They should give their children to the, to the white people for a better life. Mm-hmm. A Bahamian mother, she ain't leaving her children. But the old-fashioned one, old-time one, she can wait three jobs. Do what she have to do for ends to meet. Mm-hmm. That's a real Bahamian mother. She ain't reminding her, make her drink rum and worry. But I mean, he ain't gonna pay. She ain't gonna no court house. She ain't gonna be sitting around the court house begging for money. She could hurt her farm, they can take care of the children, because they're her children. That's just Bahamian lifestyle, that's the Bahamian culture. Okay. Women are strong. They can run their house. So the man won't be weak. Then, then she let him go. Mm-hmm. But then she take care of her children. I told her, but not suffer. Now, you will suffer when your mother dead and you're young. And you don't have a daddy. But if you have a real mother and the daddy want to act, you know, act contrary, she can go but away and take care of her children. I yeah. don't know why they does it, why they ain't but the children is hers. Yeah. I listened to, I read Cindy Poitier's book mm-hmm. when he was born. He's sickly. Mm-hmm. The, the, the daddy say, man, let him, let him, he die dead. It's not my child. No. She gone in the back of the bush to the OBL, to the OBL woman. Mm-hmm. And he lived. The OBL woman tell him that he could be a great man. Yeah. Just do this and do that. Thank that you. was her child. She didn't want to bury him. Thank you very much. Children cry, but yet they come. Children cry, but yet they come. I sort of a dynamic, right? In many instances, a man will say to his mother, Mommy, I got this baby. I need your help taking care of the baby. His mother will say, child, you make a baby, bring my baby here. I will take care of this baby. And this dynamic has worked and works for many people. But I imagine that it won't work as well if the mother of the child and the mother-in-law don't have a good relationship. 52 made the point about generationality and how Culture changes across generations and how that may impact how we approach these matters. I want to get to the caller and then maybe I'll continue, but I got some text I got to read. Good morning, caller. My name is Green. Morning, how you do? I am wonderful. I, I am calling to collaborate and agree with 52, 110%. Okay. I have five kids <laughs> that are not my biological, and I had, over the years, I had about 23. That were my biological kids. A couple of them have passed on now. Okay. You understand? Real men. My grandmother used to tell me, kids ain't responsible. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times when when persons like myself met women with one, two, or three kids, I adopt them as my own. Mm-hmm. You understand? He ain't no, it, a real man ain't going to feel no way for taking care of children if, he, if he's responsible. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I have a son living with me now. He, no, he's not my biological, but he didn't been with me for two weeks. He, 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 he be better than this old lady that when he come live with, with his adopted daddy, mm-hmm. you know, and that, that's the relationship that me and these children had oh, over the years, of course, you know, some of the baby mommies get a little angry with it, but yeah. the kids are not to blame. That That's my point. Yes. So it should be no weak, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much, caller. I'm going to get to the text line. As I said earlier, you know, I had this question from before I saw today's papers. And then I wanted to continue with the question after I saw today's papers. And I, I tell you why before I go to this next caller. 
because there are lots of conversations in this morning's paper about human rights. There are a number of stories focused on a U.S. human rights report, and then there's a story focused on commentary from the Prime Minister about marital rape. All of these are human rights issues in the story about marital rape. I think the there is reference to the new parliamentary human rights parliamentary committee that has been formed. And I, I just want to make the point, I think these are the types of conversations that we should be having on a national platform to help Bahamians sort of organize their thoughts about rights on these matters and to help policy makers understand the culture that the contributions from ordinary citizens come from when informing these human rights discussions and creating policies to address human rights issues. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Ms. Green. Morning. It's a pleasure, Terry. Thank you. Here you talk about this subject about babysitting. Mm -hmm. I, I um, from experience, know for fact that my father, my brothers, brothers-in-law, very nurturing. We don't, we don't use that word babysitting. We're nurturers. Mm -hmm. So whether it's our responsibility or it's our time to be nurturing, mm -hmm. then that's what it is. Um, but there are a lot of other uh, factors um, as far as, like the previous callers would have stated, some people, uh, they get scared. Their, their surroundings may not be um, conducive to um, their children being with them, especially men. So they would shy away from that. But for the most part, culturally, I see Bahamian men are very nurturing. I, I find that as well, that yeah. I think we still have a majority of men that are nurturers, that even if they're not nurturers 100% of the time, when you see them working or re recreating and chilling out, you see that element of them in their engagement with other people. And a lot of the times, the, 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 children, the children that they're raising and they're nurturing, they're not their blood. They're not, they're not their children by blood. So it's by relation. So that's why I say that. They're very nurturing. So, Thank you. Um, yes, ma'am. Thank you very, very much. And now listen, before you go, I get ready to throw another question out and you may want to answer it, right? One of, the okay. one of the callers and some texters earlier with this question of why do women refer to the child as mine alone, right? Is it fair that if a woman, when she is pregnant and in particular giving birth, right, that she has one foot in this realm and one foot in the, we say the grave or in the <laughs> other realm, right? If, a, if a woman, she could get diabetes while she's pregnant, she could lose her teeth while she's pregnant, right? Is, is that understanding that dynamic and the inherent risk of carrying a, 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 a baby to term and delivering a child, does that warrant a woman feeling like this child is more mine than it is his? You know, that's, this, is a, this, is a, a, this is my take on it, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I'm also, uh, I've also done some research. Uh, during the, the, the 40s, Mm -hmm. This this revolution of, I mean, a really take hold of this is my child. When a when a woman in the forties when she wanted to leave, she went, she didn't leave with a child. She left that child with the mind. Mm -hmm. She left that child and she gone. Yeah. So uh, now that uh, the relationship between man and woman have uh, is, is is fairly strained. Uh, she taken half, and she wants the children. Mm -hmm. um, and the court system um, have sided with, with um, 
with that, and that's that's the way it is. But it, it was not always so. That, thank you. That's a very yeah. interesting history, and I think we we should know that. Like, I'm gonna do a little re- research so I could quote unquote read it into the record because our conversations about the present must be informed by the past. Good morning, caller. Morning, uh, Mr. Green. I, I call the share a very interesting point. Most of us are mindful of it, but some might not be mindful. Mm-hmm. You know, at my age, I have a panoramic view. I have a son that is not even two, and I have an eight-year-old. Mm-hmm. You know, I work so long, so much long hours. I was hoping you read the text. When I come inside, the son is actually is 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 jouncing for me. Yeah. He, he, he comes up to me. He wants me to lift him. He puts his hands up in the air. So a, a male is important. The females must realize that. My daughter, she always tells me she loves me. She always hugs me. I'm not saying who's the best father. But I'm just telling you yeah. that the nurturing is so important. I didn't even realize it at 30-something. So what I'm saying is my, he, he actually wants me to lift him up. You know, and when, he, when his sister comes home from school, she rushes and she hugs him. Now uh, some, some people came to visit us, a schoolmate, and he, I see him he hugging strangers now. So I, I, I'm, I'm wary of that. I, I, just, I just I can't believe it because he, he, he's, he's nurtured in that way. Mm-hmm. He, I say you can't be hugging everybody. but I don't, he, you, understand, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, but it, it is really important to do that. Yes. Because they need that bonding for, for, for future, for, for in the future. Because when you, when you don't bond with them, this is why they don't be feeling you when they grow up. Bless up. Absolutely. I would say, uh, take a moment to say good morning to Cleaver Duncan, father's rights advocate, right? That's why the conversation about paternity rights, uh, along with maternity rights, are so important, right? Because it is in those initial early days that the bond begins And children who are lucky enough to have those moments, the time with both parents, uh, they build these, I say many of them build healthier relationships and lives. Let's get to the text line. Yes, you have to be careful who we're having kids with. Now the text, moms almost have to be a a substance abuser for the courts to give 50-50 custody, much less primary custody to the man and is is society creating space for men to be primary care givers uh easter weekend maybe he did panic i going to regard it to look for a woman i don't need no four-year-old behind me that's him talking yeah and i think it like it's a panic but here's the thing once those words are out there is you can't you can't squeeze the toothpaste back into the tube right? Uh, be probably panic. I'd say for women as well, and men, remember this. You could say some things, women, you could say some things while you're pregnant that will cut a man to his core. He will never, ever forget it. Men, women, when they're pregnant, can be emotionally imbalanced because of chemical imbalances due to the pregnancy, and they may say things that will cut you to your core, and you have to do the work of, as man of remembering that she was a different person when she said that. Another text, good morning, Aaron. For a man to say he's not keeping his child overnight is horrible and says a lot about him. If a woman wanted to come see him, I bet you 100% he's not telling her no. And there's another dynamic. I bring it into the conversation at the very, very end how do women reconcile relationships with men who are not attending to their children's needs emotionally, physically, financially? How do women reconcile relationships with these men? Is it that you don't know? And if you don't know, is that something that you ask when you are engaging an individual of you interested in starting something how many kids do you have how often do you see them see i want to know what type of life i could be living with you if i'm expecting our dates to be evening nighttime dates or am i expecting them to be daytime dates because at night you share custody of your kids and you got to be home in the bed in the house with them while they sleep in. Another text, great show, as usual. The woman who said, he ain't keeping no child, that boy is simply a worthless man, but women must be careful who they have children with. Great show, as usual. 
This text just says, Miss Green, I'm going to take you on a little reconnaissance mission. I'm going to pick you up. We will park the car by the bank and other business establishments and see the type of men who come to pick up the women who work there. And you will quickly see why we have a lot of single family homes. Once again, women are making bad choices. Another text says, uh, okay, there you go. The text says, listen, we don't date, we just have sex. Then if it is good, we ask the females for their names. It's all about culture, hey? Good morning, Aaron. I don't agree with the term the caller made, babysit your children. No one ever asked women to babysit their own children. It's called parenting. Caller, I'm coming to you right now. Good morning, caller. Hey, good morning, caller. Producer, I can't hear anything. Can you hear anything? Caller, you just hold the line. Just hold the line. Please, if not, if you can't hold the line, hang up and call back. Then continue with the text. Producer, check that line for me. Good morning, caller. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, um, good morning anyway. Well, um, they talk about um, men... Uh, men being parents to their kids. I could remember um, with my son, when he was a baby, and, you know, I from the, like they say, we from the old school, and, you know, when the baby gets a cold, right? Yes. It's a suck all the cold and thing out of the baby nose. The woman say, what? You know what I mean? They mm -hmm. ain't doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I said, well, got to do what you got to do to relieve them. You got to keep them alive. That's your job. Yeah. And to do that sort of stuff and, you know, be there, take the children to school, take them, do everything. And two years ago, I, um, with the same son, you know, on property, I um, I don't know if you're aware of um, the law where you can transfer property between you and your spouse or you and your children and off the penal stamp duty, right? Okay. This was three years ago from 20, 2021. Okay. On property, I said, um, um, to put it, um, um, I guess, you know, you have to sometimes deal with these kids where they don't get careless mm -hmm. and just be reckless with things. Mm -hmm. I say, you know what? I take this property and put it in me in your name. I said, I say, you're interested in no property being in me in his name. I said, well, where you was um, um, in 19, um, um, uh, this was four years before you born, I said, where you was in this year? Mm -hmm. He said, my daddy, I wasn't even born yet. Okay, Four then. years before you born. I said, okay. But if you didn't want to mean your name, but I follow through. Mm -hmm. Put it in me and his name. Stamp duty exam. Mm -hmm. And it's still like that. And he say, he ain't, you know, he ain't checking. But that's the way it be. You do when you do what you got to do and go to your way. Look after them, make provisions. And sometimes you don't know what kind of gratefulness they're going to show, you know? Yeah. Gratefulness they show back to you, right? Yeah. So if that ain't called trying to be a good daddy or trying to be protective or whatever it is you may have for them. I told his ma, I said, whatever else there is, it's there for them, but that'll have to be after that. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that that is a part of the experience of, of being a parent, right? That you hope that they are grateful for, that they understand the sacrifice, the reason why you did it. You hope that they understand. You hope that they want to maintain a legacy that you attempted to create. You know, and then you must hope that you have the strength to maintain the relationship no matter who they want to be. You know, and that is... I guess the joy of life. But I, I can't imagine one parent who would say, oh, this child, this child so ungrateful, I wish I never had them. They'd really say that and mean it in their heart. Another text, Miss Green, I have five children now, adults. My wife, she was always just into herself and always she had them so I should take care of them. I paid all the bills for my children from private hospital, private schools, universities. I have been 100% in my 
children to adult life. My wife gave 20%. My children always thank me every day for being there for them. They are the best thing in my life. I pray that every parent experiences that. Erin also, Erin, as my mother would always say, men always go with their hands swinging and the female is always stuck with the burden. They want to live their life like they have no responsibilities whatsoever and the mother is solely responsible like they made the child by themselves. Just imagine fathers refusing to watch their child with excuses like my apartment has no room or extra bed for 12 years. So buy one. As a matter of fact, he tried to make me buy the bed. These arrogant, narcissistic fathers today only use their kids to flaunt or as trophies when they feel fit. Most time, they are only doing 5%. Let's go to the phone line, and then I can say, thank God for his imaginative creativity, because sometimes your, your, your child is stamped with your face, and no matter how hard you try to escape it, you cannot hide from that which you created. Good morning, caller. Good morning, caller. I can't hear you. One, one second. All right, good morning, caller. Good morning, can you hear me? I can hear you, I can hear you. All right, what about these mothers who use these children against the fathers? The fathers want to be in the kids' lives, but the mother intentionally tries to keep the child away from the father, knowing that the father loves the child dearly. Mm -hmm. That's a big problem going on in the farm. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You so, go to court, mm -hmm. court or you have to take certain judges, and court on the famous judge, free court, white lady. Everyone know, but uh, she always has to be on the female side, no matter what. Okay. You know the man, so yeah. a lot of things need to change in this country. We got men who really want to take care of their kids. Absolutely. So a lot of people going to that right now, right now. Absolutely. For men who are having these issues, reach out to Cleaver Duncan. He operates a father's rights advocacy group, and he can give you advice and resources. What's the name? Cleaver Duncan, C L E C L E V E R Duncan. Okay, thank you very much. You are welcome. You are welcome. Right. I want to thank all the callers and the texters for this conversation this morning. Most of all, I, what I appreciate is that the contributions did not intend to malign or vilify either the mother or the father but to point out honestly from the individual's perspective, in many instances, what they have experienced themselves. A quick text to the text, I'm sorry, but you choose who you have intercourse with and also differently who you have children with. Develop better decision-making tactics and let your genes control you less. That is a very stern text. I'd like to continue this conversation. We're not laying blame on anyone, but most importantly, we're not blaming the children because like everybody has iterated today, they don't make the choice. Children cry, but yet they come. It's our jobs as adults to create an environment in which they could flourish. I wanted to tie this conversation in directly to commentary in today's paper, maybe another time. I think this was a great discussion. Thank you, thank you. You stay tuned because Guardian Radio AM and CA Nuri is up next. Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.